نحمد و نسلی علی رسول الکریم اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم رب شرح لی صدری و یسر لی امری و احلل اقدتم من لسانی یفقہ قولی و جعل لی وزیر من اخلی اللہم فکہنا فی الدین رب زدنی علما اللہم انی اسألکا علما نافیا رزقا طویبا و عملا متقبلا آمین سم آمین السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ سورہ القلم The surah revealed in Mecca has 52 verses, two stanzas, 68 by the order of arrangement and second by the order of revolution. The first to be revealed were the few verses of Surah Al-Alaq and the second to be revealed were the few verses of Surah Al-Qalam. The surah gets its name because right in the start of the surah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sworn by the qalam and it is also known as Surah, uh, surah Noon because of the starting alphabet. The period of revolution is that this was also revealed in, in just the starting period of Makkah being the second by the order of revolution. As far as the theme, <clears throat> the theme and the subject matter of the surah is concerned, uh, it consists of basically three themes. That is replies to the objections of the opponents. Second is administration of warning and admonition to all the opponents of Prophet Sallallahu And third is exhortation to Prophet Sallallahu to be patient and uh, perseverant. At the start of the surah, Prophet Sallallahu has been addressed and he has been told that uh, these disbelievers, they call you insane, nausubillah, and a madman. Whereas the book that you are presenting and the sublime conduct that you are presenting and practicing is sufficient to refute their false accusations. And you, they themselves, they will soon see as to who is insane and who is sane. And then in order to enlighten the common people, um, the character of uh, the prominent man from among the opponents has been highlighted as an eye opener. And then in verses 17 to 33, the parable of the owners of uh, the garden, they have been presented. They had been blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they turned ungrateful to him and they did not heed to the admonition of the best man among them. And the result was that they were deprived of the blessings. And then they realized this when they had, when everything had been devastated. So the purpose is to warn all those who were opposing the, uh, the appointment of Prophet Wasallam was warning that you are behaving in a similar manner and you will be uh, you will also suffer the doom of devastation and in verses 34 to 47 uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has addressed and warned the disbelievers and in the conclusion Prophet Sallallahu has been exhorted to bear with patience the hardships that he has to face because of preaching the faith and he has to stay, he has been asked to stay patient till the last time of, till the last breath of his life. And uh, the, the verses of uh, Surah Anun, they start with the alphabet of Noon. Bismillah rahman rahim Noon wal qalami wa ma yasturun. ما أنت بنعمة ربك بمجنون وإن لك على أجر غير ممنون وإن قل على خلق عظيم. Allah سبحانه وتعالى says noon by the pen and what they inscribe. So in this first verse, Allah سبحانه وتعالى swears by the name of the pen. This highlights what. The importance of reading and writing in education in Islam and Quran. We can relate that the first revolution, the verses of Surah 
Surah was what? Surah Al-Alaq, the first verse said what? Ikra, read. And the second revolution of Surah Al-Qalam is what? Wal Qalam, to write. So the importance of reading and writing, education and literacy in Islam, how important it is. Islam does not dislike or does not discourage Muslims against seeking even the worldly knowledge and the worldly skills. Because, you know, this would lead to the progress of the ummah, acquiring the worldly knowledge and the worldly skills. This would lead to the progress of the Muslim ummah itself, because it is a source of, it will also turn out to be a source of lawful and halal income and earning also. And remember, Islamization and the implementation of the teachings of Quran and Islam will not in any way put to an end the worldly education or the Islamic educational institutions. They will not, when we, we will set up the Islamic educational institutions, that would in no form imply that the institutions of worldly education will be discouraged. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks in Quran, Hal yalamuna la yalamun, that do you think that the people who are knowledgeable, they are equal to the people who are deprived of all forms of knowledge? Rabbi Zidni ilma, Allahumma fakihna fid deen, Allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafian, rizqan toyiban, wa amalam mutakabbala. And in this verse number one, we, we learn that Allah has sworn by the pen. And we know that pen was the first creation of Allah Almighty, the first creation of the universe. And after creating it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered the pen to write. And the pen asked that, what should I write? And then Allah ordered the book of fate to be written. And Allah Alimul Ghaib, Allah Mul Ghayub, who is in knowledge of all the future, of all the happenings of the future and of all the fate, then ordered and dictated the pen to write about the book of fate. And the fate, good and bad decree, was written before the creation of all the beings of the universe. Allah Almighty is what? Alimul Ghaib, Allah Mul Ghayub. You are not Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam by the favor of your Lord, a mad, insane man. And indeed, for you is a reward uninterrupted. And indeed, what? And indeed, you are of a great moral character. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is mentioning, Allah is acknowledging, appreciating the excellent models and the manners of his beloved prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam hazrat aisha radiyallahu ta'ala and how she was asked that what were the manners of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and she was surprised and she answered haven't you ever read the quran and then she said kana khuluquhul quran that the manners of prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam were what they were the model of quran and then Prophet Sallallahu has been reported that in a tradition, he said, Inni bu'istu, that I was sent down. Why? For what? Makaramul ikhlaq, for the perfection of good morals. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, help us, help us work, struggle and strive to improve our morals, our ethics, our conduct, our behaviors with all those around us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, make us practicing Muslims with good morals. Allahumma inni a'uzu bika mimu kirat al-akhlaq wal-a'mal wal-akhwa'i wal-adwa. Hazrat Aisha, radiallahu ta'ala anha, she reports about the morals of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam telling that he never beat any attendant. He never raised hands on any woman and he was never revengeful for any personal reasons. And he always stayed away from sins. And Hazrat Anas radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he says that I was in the service of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for full 10 years. And he never said a word of anger to me. And whenever I did something wrong, 
He never would ask me why I did so. And whenever I did not do what I was told to do so, he never asked me why I had not done this. This was the patience, the tolerance, the mercy, the forbearance, and the forgiveness and kindness and goodness of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala help us adopt all these manners perseverantly and with persistence in our lives. And you will see, and they will see, which of you is the afflicted by devil. Indeed, your Lord is most of knowing, is most knowing of who has gone astray from his way. And he is the most knowing of the rightly guided. Allahumma ja'alna minhum. Then do not obey the deniers. They wish that you would soften in your position so they would soften towards you. And do not obey every worthless habitual swearer. So now from here, verse number 10 to verse number 16, Allah is mentioning the traits of Walid bin Mughera. And uh, not only Allah is mentioning the traits, Allah is also mentioning the traits, his behavior, his mannerism, how he was blessed, and in response, how did he behave, and what punishment has he been promised in Quran. Do not obey every worthless and habitual swearer. The person who swears very commonly is one who is a liar to make people believe what he is saying is the truth. And a scorner going about with malicious gossip, a preventer of good, transgressing and sinful, cruel, moreover, an illegitimate pretender because he is a possessor of wealth and children. And when our verses are recited to him, he says, legends of the former people. We will brand him upon the snout. Indeed, we have tried them as we tried the companions of the garden when they swore to cut its fruit in the early morning. So now from here, the verse number 17 to the verse number 33, Allah is going to narrate the story of the people of the orchard. What was the state of affairs was that there was a generous farmer. And he used to, he was very generous and he used to spend from the yield of his orchard on the day of the harvest. And uh, he was very uh, meticulous and he was very methodical. He used to save one third of uh, the, the yield. He used to save for his domestic expenditures. One third he used to, he used to save and keep back for the overheads of uh, the farm. And one third he used to spend as charity. What he used to do was that he used to inform all the people of the village about the day of the harvest. And the purpose used to be that the needy would come and they would get their share in the charity. But when he passed away and, he, and his sons, they inherited, they were misers and they were, they were stingy people. And the verse is they narrate their behavior and their mutual conversations and what the result of their being stingy and miserly were. What happened was that they swore to cut its fruit in the early morning without making exception. So there came upon the garden an affliction from your Lord while they were asleep and it became as though reaped and they called one another in the morning saying go early to your crop if you would cut the fruit so they set out while lowering their voices why were they doing all this why did they leave early and why were they lowering their voices is because they wanted to ensure secrecy they wanted to ensure secrecy that nobody in the village finds out that it is the day of their harvest and so that the people don't come to take their share, saying there will surely not enter it today upon you, any poor person. So this was the main reason. And they went early in determination, assuming themselves able. But when they saw it, they said, indeed, we are lost. Rather, we have been deprived. So what this was, when they reached initially, they saw the condition of the garden was such that it was impossible for them to recognize it, even though it was their own garden. But when they looked around and they saw that it was the same place, then they got the reality that it had been what? It had the law, the garden had been perished. Why had the gar all that cultivation and all their fields and crops, they had perished? Why? Because we learned from a tradition 
that Prophet Sallallahu said that every morning, every morning and every evening, two angels supplicate in the heavens and they say, Oh Allah, bless the wealth of those who make charity that is spent in the path of Allah and destroy the wealth of those who stop their wealth from making charity, that they are misers and they are stingy people. This was what? This was their love and lust of the worldly possessions, as Allah says, Innahu bil khayri rashadi. This is the basic problem with you that you are disobedient to Allah, that the love of money and the lust and desire of the worldly wealth and riches is deeply, deeply ingrated in your hearts. And Allah says, That to gather the wealth and riches of the world is what you love and what you desire. This was a manner of what? This is this was a manner of being ungrateful for all the blessings they had. And that is why they did not spend in the path of Allah. That is what Allah has said. La in shakartum la azid wala in kafartum in azabi la shadid. They were ungrateful. They did not spend all these blessings in the path of Allah, and they were ungrateful. And that is why the torment of Allah fell upon them and everything was destroyed. The most moderate of them said, did I not say to you, why do not you exalt Allah? They said, exalted is our Lord. Indeed, we were the wrongdoers. Then they approached one another, blaming each other. They said, oh, woe to us. Indeed, we were the transgressors. Perhaps our Lord will substitute for us one better than it. Indeed, we are towards our Lord desirous. Such is the punishment. Such is the punishment of this world. And the punishment of hereafter is greater if they only knew. Indeed, for the righteous with their Lord are the gardens of pleasure. Then will we treat the Muslims? Will we treat the Muslims like criminals? What is the matter with you? How do you judge? Or do you have a scripture in which you learn that indeed for you is whatever you choose? Or do you have an oath binding upon us, extending until the day of resurrection, that indeed for you is whatever you judge? Ask them, ask them, which of them for that claim is responsible? Or do they have partners? Then let them bring their partners if they should be truthful. The day the shin will be uncovered and they are invited to prostration, but the disbelievers will not be able to. Their eyes humbled, humiliation will cover them, and they used to be invited to prostration while they were sound. In these verses, number 42 and 43, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explains a condition for the arrogant people on the day of judgment. The arrogant disbelievers who refused to prostrate, who refused to prostrate in the worldly life on the day of judgment, there will be an order, there will be an order issued and proclaimed for all the people, for all those on the day of judgment to prostrate before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And these arrogant people, they will see and observe for themselves, right and left, all the people will be prostrating. But they, despite their desire, they will not be able to do so. Why? Because their backs because their backs and their necks, they will be constructed of metal or wooden planks. Allahumma la taj'alna minhum rabbi ja'alni maqeem as-salati wa min zuriyati. These will be the punishment for all those who fail to prostrate. These will be the punishment for all those arrogant, stubborn, obstinate people who fail to offer their salat. Their eyes humbled, humiliation will cover them, and they used to be invited to prostration while they were sound. So leave me, so leave me with the matter of whoever denies the Quran, we will progressively lead them to punishment from where they do not know, and I will give them time. Indeed, my plan is firm. Or do you ask of them a payment so they are by, so they are by debt? burdened down or have the knowledge of the unseen so they write it down then be patient for the decision of your lord and be not like the companion of the fish when he called out while he was distressed if not that a favor from his lord overtook him he would have been thrown into the naked shore while he was censored and his lord chose him and made 
made him of the righteous, and indeed those who disbelieve would almost make you slip with their eyes when they hear the message and they say, indeed, he is mad, but it is not except a reminder to the world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, help us all, help us all take the reminders of the verses of Quran. Help us cling to our state of obedience till our last breath before death. Allahumma aini ala ghamaratil maut wa sakaratil maut. And from the concept, from the verse 52, we uh, learn the concept of the evil of the eye. And we've been taught from the words of Quran also that the concept of uh, envious eye is a true concept according to the teachings of Quran. And we've been taught in Quran, evil sight, the evil of the envious sight is definitely there. And we need to seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection from that. And to seek protection from the evil of the eye, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi taught us what? That whenever we see something and when we appreciate it to save us from the evil of the eye, what we what we should do is we should recite, MashaAllah, la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. And then Prophet Sallallahu has also taught us a supplication, And then also uh, performing incantation with Surah Nas and Surah Al-Falaq will save us from the evils of um, envy and from the evil sight also. Subhanallah, wa bihamdihi, adada khulkihi, wa rizwan nafsihi, wa zinata arshihi, wa midada kalimatihi. Rabbana, la tuzay qulubana, bada is hadaytana wa khablana, miladunka rahma, innaka anta wahab. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika, nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta nastakbiruka wa natubu alayk. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun, wa salamun ala al-mursaleen, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Ameen, summa ameen. Surah al-Haqqa. Surah al haqqa this is, uh, we learned that this was revealed in, uh, it was revealed in, uh, in uh, Makkah. It has two stanzas, it has 52 verses, it is 69 by the order of arrangement and 78 by the order of revolution. It takes its name from the word al haqqa with which it opens. And regarding the period of revolution, this too is one of the earliest surahs to be revealed in Makkah. And we learn from the subject matter of the surah that there was opposition to Prophet Sallallahu It had started, but it was uh, not, there was no persecution Execution and physical torturing had not started yet. And the basic theme and the subject matter of the surah is that in verses 1 to 37, Allah is talking about hereafter. And uh, the second part is from the verse 38 to 59, Allah talks about the fact that Quran is a revolution from Allah and Holy Prophet Sallallahu is a true messenger of Allah. So the basic three topics in which Allah has talked about in this surah is the belief in hereafter and the belief in the book and belief in the prophethood of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Al-Haqatu Malhaqa wa ma adraqa malhaqa. Inevitable reality. What is the inevitable reality? And what can what can make you know what is the inevitable reality? Samud and Ad denied the striking calamity. So as for Samud, they were destroyed by the overpowering blast. And as for Ad, they were destroyed by the screaming violent wind, which Allah imposed upon them for seven nights and eight days in succession. So you would see the people therein fallen as if they were hollow trunks of palm trees. Then do you see of them any remains? And there came Pharaoh and those before him and the overturned cities with sin. 
What was their sin? They disobeyed the messengers of their Lord. So he sees them with the Caesar exceeding in severity. Indeed, when the water overflowed, we carried your ancestors in the sailing ship that we might make it for you a reminder and a conscious ear would be conscious of it. Then when the horn is blown with one blast and the earth and the mountains are lifted and leveled with one blow, then on that day, the resurrection will occur and the heaven will split open for that day it is infirm and the angels are its edges where the throne of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they will and there will bear the throne of your Lord above them that day eight of them. That day you will be exhibited for judgment, not hidden among you is anything concealed. So as for you, so as for he who is given his record in his right hand, he will say, How mukarau kitabiya. Here, read my record. This is what this is. This is all about the success of the day of judgment, the day of resurrection. Allah says all those who will be handed over their records in the right hand, they will be the successful. Allahumma ja'alla minhum. Allahumma ja'alla minhum. Allahumma ja'alla minhum. Allah make us all one of those. And the successful, he will say what? He will say, how mukru kitabiya. This is just like in this world, you know, that when a student, when a student gets the result and he is, he comes out successful, what happens is that he is overjoyed and the person, the child shouts out, see, I got straight A's, see, I got all A pluses and see, I got a distinction, see, I got a world top. The, the child shouts out, the child jumps, the child jumps with joy and shares, shares the result with the near and dear ones. Similarly, similarly, on the day of judgment, the one to be successful on the day of judgment will rejoice, will announce, and will also explain the reason behind the success. The person who will be rejoicing the success on the day of judgment will explain the reason of his success. He will say what? He will say, indeed, I was certain that I would be meeting my accounts. So this is what those who believe, those who had a strong belief of hereafter and a strong faith of accountability, only they will be the ones who will be the successors. Only they will be the ones who will be rejoicing with the phrase, how mukrau kitabiya. Allah make us all of that. So we will be in a pleasant life. What will this pleasant life be like? In elevated gardens. It's fruits to be picked hanging near. They will be told, eat and drink in satisfaction for what you put forth in these days past. But as for he who is given his records in his left hand, he will say, Oh, I wish I had not been given my record and I had not known what is my account. I wish my death had been the decisive one. My wealth, my wealth has not availed me. Why? Because he had not spent anything for the, for the sake of Allah. He had not spent anything foolishly. He had not spent anything for his life hereafter he had not foolishly he had not deposited anything in the akhira investment bank very foolishly and being very very inadvertent he had not he had not bartered for jannah traded for the palace of jannah he will say my wealth has not availed me gone from me is my authority allah will say seize him he will be whom who had authority power Wealth in this world, Allah will say, seize him and shackle him into the hell fire, drive him then into a chain whose length is 70 cubits, insert him. Indeed, he did not use to believe in Allah, the most great, nor did he encourage the feeding of poor. Why will this person who will, who was, who was healthy, wealthy, he had power, he had authority, he had all the control in this world. Why will he be chained? Why will he be 
why will he be dragged and thrown down into hellfire? Because first he did not believe in Allah. He did not believe in his account of the day of judgment. And then not believing in that, he did not. He did not encourage others to feed the poor. It was not that he did not feed poor himself. It was even beyond that. He did not motivate. He did not encourage. He did not encourage those around himself. His near and dear ones to feed the poor. Because we know that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has clearly informed all of us that a person who feeds, who feeds a one who is hungry, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala will feed him with the, with the provisions of Jannah. And the person who provides drinks for the person who is thirsty, Allah will provide him with the drinks of Jannah. And the person who clothes, a person who doesn't have clothes or dresses or garments, provides garments to the person who is undressed, Allah will provide him with the garments of Jannah. So there is not for him here this day any devoted friend, nor any food except from the discharge of wounds. None will eat it except the sinner. So I swear by what you see and what you do not see, that indeed the Quran is the word of a noble messenger, and it is not the word of a poet. Why little do you believe, nor the word of a soothsayer, little do you remember. You know, these verses, uh, verses number 40 to 44, they have a very uh, interesting incident which, which was narrated by Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said that before embracing Islam one day, I came out of my house with the view to cause trouble to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But he said that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he had entered Masjid haram before me. And when I arrived, I found that he was reciting Surah Haqqa in his in his salah. And I stood behind him and I listened to him quietly. And he recited the Quran. And I wondered, and I wondered at its literacy and at the literacy of its charm and beauty. And then suddenly an idea came to my mind that he must be a poet. He must be a poet as the people of Quran, they accuse him of. And just at that moment, I heard that he was reciting these words that this is the word of an honorable messenger. It is not the word of a poet. And I said to myself, <coughs> as Umar said, that I said to myself that he must be a sooth, uh, he must be a soothsayer if he is not a poet. And thereupon, immediately, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he recited the words, nor nor is it the word of a soothsayer. Little little is that you reflect. And it is the revolution from the Lord and the sustainer of the world. On hearing this, he said that Islam entered deep into my heart. But despite the fact that he heard the words of Quran reciprocating to the ideas which were coming in his, in his mind. Remember, this is the miracle of Quran. This is a miracle of Quran, which we will experience many times in our lives during the recitation of Quran. We recite a verse and a thought comes to our mind, a question comes to our mind, and there we recite the next verse, and we give an answer. We get an answer in the next verse, and we give, we get a logic in the next verse. So this is a miracle of Quran. And Hazrat Umar radiallahu ta'ala, and who he actually experienced this miracle of Quran, but despite this miraculous listening of the recitation of Quran, despite this, he did not openly embrace Islam. And finally, the turning point of his life was when he learned the Quran in, uh, in the house of his sister. And we've gone through the uh, occasion previously also. So it is not the word of a poet. Little do you believe, nor the word of a soothsayer. A soothsayer. Little do you remember, it is a revolution from the Lord of the worlds. And if Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa had made up about us some false sayings, we would have seized him by the right hand. Then we would have cut off from, cut off from him the iota, and there is no one of you who could prevent us from him. And indeed, the Quran is a reminder for the righteous. Indeed, we know that among you are the deniers. And indeed, it will be a cause of regret upon the disbelievers. And indeed, it is the truth of certainty. 
So exalt the name of your Lord, the most great. Subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wala ilaha illallah, wallahu akbar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, help us, help us take out all forms of arrogance and help us stay as humble servants to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma ja'alni sabura wa ja'alni shakura wa ja'alni fi aini sagira wa fi a'yunin nasi kabira.